Found roaming the bleak moors of the highlands, the Kushi is a ghostly fairy dog. Living in caves and around rocky outcrops, the beast was always searching for souls to prey upon. The Kushi is described as having a long green shaggy coat and being the size of a small cow. The dog was known to hunt silently, however, it was also known to let out three terrifying barks or howls that could be heard for miles around. Those who hear the barking of the Kushi must reach safety by the third bark, or be overcome with terror and die as a result. Although, some said that it wasn't the bark itself that caused the death, but rather, the dog would emerge and tear the soul from the body of its victim. The soul would then be trapped in the fairy realm forever. Mostly found in the Borders area, specifically the Hermitage River in Liddersdale, the Shelley Coat is a bogeyman or goblin creature that haunts the rivers and streams of Scotland. It gets its name from the coat of shells that it wears, which makes a rattling sound when it moves. The creature is a prankster and is relatively harmless, but nevertheless is prone to playing cruel tricks on those that trespass on its domain. It enjoys misleading wanderers and travellers, with its usual tactic being mimicking the sounds of a person drowning. The innocent trespasser hears the splashing and the screaming and runs to their rescue, but the shelly coat would move further along the river, so the would-be rescuer then ends up in a wild goose chase in an attempt to find the drowning person. Once they're exhausted, cold and often wet, the shelly coat reveals himself and bursts into laughter revealing it was all a trick. The Minch is a strait that separates the Northwest Highlands and the Northern Inner Hebrides from the Northern Outer Hebrides. This stretch of water is home to the Blue Men. The Blue Men of the Minch are a mysterious race of creatures, unknown anywhere else in Scotland or the rest of the world. Aside from the blue skin, they look very much the same as humans. They swim with their torsos raised out of the sea during bad weather, and float sleeping just below the surface of the water during fine weather. When a ship approaches, one of the blue men will shout to the crew a couple of lines of poetry and demand that they complete the verse. If the captain cannot give the blue men the correct lines, then the creatures will capsize the ship and drag the poor men down to a watery grave. Known as the Washerwoman, the Ben Nia is an omen of death and can be found in dark lonely places where she'll wash the bloodstained clothes of those about to die. Descriptions of the creature vary depending on location, with the most common being a malnourished old decrepit woman with a big hook nose and calloused hands. She has long saggy breasts which she would fling over her shoulders so as not to have them in the way of her washing. If you were to approach her, and suckle from the breasts, she would grant you great knowledge. But if you were caught and seen, however, you'd be paralysed for the remainder of your days. One Highland belief stated that if a woman died during childbirth, then she would be doomed to become a Ben Nier. The Linton Worm lived at a hollow on the northeast side of Linton Hill in Ruxbrusha. At dusk each day, it would emerge from its den and ravage the countryside, eating crops, livestock and people. News of the beast reached the ears of John Somerville, the laird of Lariston. He saw the worm would open its mouth wide to swallow anything in its path, but would remain still with its mouth open if it encountered something too large to swallow. Using an iron spear impaled with a hunk of peat covered in tar and brimstone, he charged the beast on horseback as it emerged from its den. Both himself and the horse were too large for the beast to swallow. The burning lance was thrust down the worm's throat, killing it and putting an end to the terror. Redcaps are a malevolent goblin found along Scotland's border with England. 
they're known to inhabit the ruined castles and peel towers, especially those that were the scenes of tragedy and murder. With fiery red eyes, sharp claws, iron boots and long grisly hair, the red cap is a grim sight to behold. Wielding a pike staff, he'll kill any traveller that takes refuge in his lair, and then will soak his cap in their blood. It appears that they can be tamed or befriended though, such as in the case of Lord Solas of Hermitage Castle, who owned a red cap and had him do his bidding. Love them or loathe them, bagpipes play an important part of Scottish culture, and they're woven into the country's myths and legends as well. There are countless ghost stories from across Scotland, and one of the most common spectres is the Phantom Piper. Often haunting tunnels, caves and castles, these ghosts were once pipers in life, and, having met their end under tragic circumstances, continue to play from beyond the grave. One famous story comes from Culleyne Castle in Ayrshire, where a piper marched down into the caves by the coast to prove they weren't haunted, playing his pipe so that people knew he was still there. The sound eventually faded away as he went deeper, and he never re-emerged. A ghostly piper is also said to play his pipes in the grounds of the castle, particularly when a member of the Kennedy family is about to get married. And he's also been heard playing on stormy nights, mixed in with the sound of the wind and the crashing waves from the sea below. Water bulls, also known as Tarvishka in Gaelic, reside in lochs throughout the Highlands, but they've also been found too in southern Scotland. They emerge from the lochs at night and mate with nearby cattle, producing offspring distinguishable by their small or split ears. While not as malevolent as other creatures, they certainly aren't friendly towards people. There aren't many stories detailing attempts to capture or kill the bulls, as they weren't generally considered to be a huge threat. However, one story from 1819 told of how a farmer loaded his musket with silver sixpence coins and fired on the water bull that was bothering his cattle, as silver was the only way to kill this creature. The Bavan Shi are a race of fairy vampire women that roam the highlands. They're extremely beautiful and they wear long dresses to conceal the deer hooves that they have instead of feet. Usually they appear when groups of men, often hunters or travellers, are alone at night and find themselves wanting female company. In one tale, four men were in the highlands out hunting and they stayed overnight in a sheiling. One man began to sing some merry tunes and the others began to dance, only to wish that they had some female partners. It was then that the Bavanshi arrived at the hut and granted them their wish. One of the men noticed blood dripping down from his friends in the midst of the dancing, so he fled the shieling and took refuge amongst the horses. The creatures chased after him, but were unable to take him due to being repelled by the iron shoes the horses were wearing. When morning came, the she vanished, and the man found all of his friends dead, drained of their blood. The Urisk is a fascinating, lonesome and misunderstood creature. They have the hind legs of a goat, fang-like teeth, shaggy hair and pointed ears. They live in solitude and spend most of the time lingering in the highlands by streams, waterfalls and rocky outcrops. The Urisk wants nothing more than company and conversation with humans, but their rather foul appearance renders this extremely difficult to come by, as most people are terrified and keep well clear should they encounter one. When the cold winter comes, the Urisk seek refuge in nearby cottages, barns, farmsteads and bothies. If treated well, They'll occasionally help out with chores and odd jobs, but if treated badly, then they can become a terror, setting fire to things and making off with livestock. Some clan chiefs were also known to have Eurisks as servants, such as the chief of the Macfarlands. The 
The cat she is a fairy creature in the form of a large black cat with a white spot on its chest. The Kachi stole the souls of the dead in the highlands by crossing over their lifeless bodies as they waited to be buried. Many funeral customs in this part of the country were created specifically to keep the Kachi away. A constant vigil was to guard the corpse before burial, and there were many distractions to keep it at bay. No fires were to be lit as the creature was attracted by the warmth. Some would challenge the Kachi to contests of speed or strength, and even riddles and music were used to occupy it and keep it away from the dead body. The Nukalavi is a truly nightmarish and terrifying creature. Its domain is the sea, but it does venture out onto land, much to the horror of those that live on the Orkney Islands. It appears as a man's torso attached to the back of a horse, as if it were a rider. His arms are so long that they reach down to the ground. The rider's head is large and rolls back and forth, while the horse head has a singular eye, and its mouth produces toxic vapour that wilts crops and sickens livestock. He had no skin, and witnesses report seeing black blood coursing through its yellow veins and being able to see every movement its muscles make. Islanders couldn't speak his name without having to utter a prayer, such was the fear that they had of this creature. Yet curiously, he was repelled by fresh water, hence why he never appeared when it rained. Those that found themselves being pursued by the Knuckle of E could escape by reaching a stream and crossing over it. Will o' the Wisp, sometimes known as fairy fire or corpse candles, are found hovering over marshland and swamps, mostly at night time. These atmospheric ghostly lights take on the appearance of lanterns or flickering lamps, and appear to lost travellers who then follow them only to end up more lost than they already were, or even trapped in a bog or a swamp, left to freeze or drown. Many have speculated on what these lights actually are, some think they're ghosts, some think they're fairies, while others think they're elemental land spirits. They aren't always malevolent though. In some tales, depending on how travellers treat the wisp, they help lead people out of difficult situations and back onto the road. Ben McDewey is the highest peak in the Cairngorms and the second highest peak in Britain. Its summit and its mountain passes are haunted by Amphalia Moor, the big grey man. He stands at over ten feet tall, he's very thin, has dark skin and hair, has long arms and broad shoulders. Most of the time, the creature remains unseen in the fog of the mountain, with encounters limited to the sound of crunch and gravel as it walks behind climbers, and a general feeling of unease all around the mountain. No pictures have ever been taken of the big grey man of Ben McDewey, but reports of him always include the climber feeling intense feelings of dread. Mist closes in on their location, and strange noises are heard, often followed by a sighting of the huge figure. Brownies or brunies are household spirits or hobgoblins that emerge at night to perform certain household chores and farm work while the homeowners are asleep. In return, the human owners of the home would leave a bowl of cream or porridge or similar kind of offering to the brownie as a thanks for its hard work. Brownies are easily offended though, and they'll be greatly angered at things that might be meant in good faith. For example, giving the brownie clothes or trying to baptise it would make it leave forever. They're also known to be quite mischievous, and don't take kindly to lazy people. If they see a worker or servant that's not pulling their weight, then they'll be more than happy to pull pranks on them. The Glastig is a thin, grey spirit with long yellow hair reaching down to her heels. She wears a green dress and is known to haunt certain farms and homesteads, acting as a protector for the home and for livestock. 
Her yell was known to be so loud that it could be heard from distant hills miles away. She is regarded as somewhere between fairy and human, a woman that had fairy nature given to her. She seemed to take special interest in cows, seeing it as her duty to protect them. In return, she appreciated offerings of milk. She also had a certain fondness for people with low intelligence, the stupid and the dim-witted. The fool of Donolly Castle was taken under the special protection of a glass stick, and she put sawdust in the meat of those that made fun of him. The Ark Ishka is a water horse found predominantly in the highlands. They're often mistaken for Kelpies, which is something quite different, as you'll soon see. They live in lochs and the ocean, and they're known to drag men, women and children down to a terrible watery death. Should someone mount this creature, or even touch it, then its skin will become adhesive, and it immediately charges into the sea, or into the deepest part of the loch, carrying or dragging its victim with it. Once the poor individual is drowned, the Ark Ishka will then devour most of the body, and the entrails float up to the surface of the water. In one story, a boy who's been carried into the water by the creature pulls out his knife and then cuts off his finger which was stuck to it, saving himself from a terrible death. Kelpies are not what you likely think them to be. Many stories of the Ark Ishka are incorrectly referred to as Kelpies. However, they do share some similar features, but early accounts and folklore make an important distinction between the two creatures. The Kelpies don't inhabit locks, they reside in streams and rivers. They're shape-shifting creatures, usually in the form of a black horse-like thing, but they can adopt human form too, usually noticeable by the presence of water weeds in their hair. The Kelpie will often take on human form when they're hoping to trick or trap someone, only to revert back to its equine form once it's discovered, and then it slips away back to its river. In one story, a Kelpie takes on the guise of a handsome young man and attempts to woo a pretty young girl, only for her to take away a silver necklace, which was his bridal, and then puts him to work on her father's farm once he consequently changes back to his horse form. The Big Beast of Loch Awe is a mysterious creature of which we know very little. John Gregerson Campbell mentions it in his book, Superstitions of the Highlands and Islands of Scotland. Found in Loch Awe in Argyll, the beast has 12 legs and was heard in the winter breaking the ice. Some say it looked like a horse, while others say it looked more like an eel. Whether it was dangerous or not is unknown. The Biest Fialach is a monster that haunts the Odal Pass on the Isle of Skye. It's a nocturnal shapeshifter taken on the form of a man, often with only one leg, or a greyhound. It was heard uttering terrible shrieks and cries that made workmen flee the bothies they were staying in nearby when they heard it. Travellers passing this area at night reported being attacked by the creature, and one man was found with a wound in his side and his leg, wounds that locals said couldn't have been inflicted by humans. Mostly in the Northern Isles, Selkies are creatures that appear to be seals, but once on land can shed their seal skin and then have the appearance of beautiful young women. Most stories involve Selkies getting involved in romantic relationships with humans and having children as a result, but often these relationships are due to trickery and coercion. A lonely fisherman catches a Selkie absent a seal skin and takes it or hides it. These relationships and marriages are generally unhappy though, as the Selkie longs for the sea, and even after many years of marriage, will escape as soon as they find the skin. The Gilly Do is a solitary male fairy creature in the Northwest Highlands. He was timid, but he was also known to be wild on occasion. 
He has dark hair, he's clothed in leaves and moss, and he avoids any and all contact with humans if he can. Should an adult trespass on his domain, then he'll react very aggressively. However, he won't take this tone with children. With them, he's extremely kind and affectionate. In one story, a child named Jessie McRae wandered into the woods and got lost, and she was found by the Gilly Doo, who looked after her until the next morning when he took her home. Over a period of decades after this, the Gilly Doo was frequently seen by many people, but Jessie was the only person that he conversed with. The fairies are found all across the British Isles, and Scotland has more than its fair share of them. Often living in mounds or forests, the fairies vary hugely in how they interact with humans, from being helpful to mischievous to outright malicious. Sometimes they would kidnap newborn babes and replace them with a hideous changeling, taking the baby back with them to elfland or fairyland, the realms found within their mounds. The fairies were also said to have given Clan MacLeod a magical fairy flag, which has protected the clan from harm and is still held today at Dunvegan Castle on the Isle of Skye. Loch Oich is perhaps overshadowed by the more famous loch found just to its north, but this stretch of water is home to a monster. It was notably spotted on August the 13th, 1936 by Alderman Richards and his companions while they were out boating on Loch Oich near Lagan. They described the monster as a strange creature with two humps like a snake's coils, each three feet in height, three foot long and three feet apart. What was most interesting about the creature though, is that its head was shaggy, like a dog, and the entire body was black in colour. Finally, the creature that everyone's heard of, the Loch Ness Monster. One of the most famous creatures in folklore, and one of the most sought after. The loch is one of the largest expanses of water in Britain. Its steep banks plunge to a depth of over 800 feet, and it's the largest of a string of lochs along the Great Glen. The earliest reports of the monster go back as far as 565, when St. Columba supposedly banished the creature after hearing about it killing local people. Yet, reports and sightings have continued for centuries, leading to a lot of speculation and investigation. Regardless, many tourists visit the loch in hopes of catching a glimpse of this creature. So that concludes my list of 25 creatures from Scottish folklore. If you enjoyed this, you might enjoy my video of 25 creatures from English folklore, and it won't be too long before I make videos about Ireland and Wales too. As always, a big thank you to my patrons who support my work. I film most videos on location, and it wouldn't be possible without them. And thanks to you as well, the viewer. I hope you found this interesting, and it inspired you to delve further into the world of myths and legends. <laughs>